This is a mini lesson on Newton's Third Law. Newton's Third Law is one of the most famous laws of physics. It's one that you probably heard in elementary school, uh, where it was called something like the reaction or the action reaction law. Uh, but uh, Newton's Third Law is actually surprisingly difficult to really get a grasp on. And we're going to state it slightly differently than the action-reaction law. Okay, we're going to state it like this. We're going to say that if object 1 exerts a force on object 2, then object 2 exerts an equal and opposite force on object 1. We can write that in equation form very easily. We'll write it like this, F12, which stands for the force that object 1 is exerting on object 2, equals F21 with a minus sign. Okay, so that says that if uh, one thing, say a person, uh, pushes on the wall with a force of 10 newtons. So here's our wall, here's our person. Okay, so if the person is pushing on the wall with a force of 10 newtons to the right, then that means that the wall is pushing back on the person with a force of 10 newtons to the left. And uh, forces always occur in pairs like that because any time any object at all exerts a force on any other object, the second object exerts a force that's equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the first force. So uh, that's very easy to state, but uh, it has some kind of odd implications. Uh, that means for example, if you go and, uh, I mean, this would be a, a disaster if, if elementary school kids really did understand this, right? Because, you know, can you imagine some elementary school kid saying, you know, he pushed me, and the other guy says, well, he pushed me just as hard, and it would be true, <laughs> because it's not possible for one person to exert a force uh, on a second person without the opposite happening too. Well, uh, let's do an example or discuss an example that illustrates just how surprising Newton's third law can be. So here's our bus that is uh, going down the interstate at 60 miles an hour. Uh, and also, uh, flying along the highway is a fly. The bus and the fly have a collision. Uh, the bus wins, of course. The fly goes splat. The bus barely even notices uh, that anything has happened. Probably doesn't notice anything at all except a smudge on the windshield. Yet, if we ask, how does the force uh, of the bus uh, on the fly compare to the force of the fly on the bus. Okay, now I know that your intuition is screaming that the force of the bus on the fly is way more than the force of the fly on the bus. Yet, if Newton's third law is true, those two forces must be equal. Now, uh, how is that possible? Uh, well, 
it's possible because your intuition is actually not about the forces involved. Your intuition is actually about the acceleration that happens as a result of those forces. Okay, so it's actually uh, Newton's second law is the answer to how this seemingly crazy thing, you know, the fact that these two forces are equal to each other, how can that possibly be true if the fly dies and the bus doesn't even notice what happens? Okay, so let's talk about, let's, uh, I'll show you how Newton's second law goes, goes with Newton's third law and makes this situation make a little bit more sense. Okay, so Newton's second law is that the net force on an object is equal to its mass times its acceleration. Now, according to Newton's third law, the two forces on these uh, objects, the force of the bus on the fly and the force of the fly on the bus, they have to be equal. What does not have to be equal are the masses and the accelerations. Okay, in the case of the bus, for example, we have some force, which is equal to some huge mass, all right, and because the mass is huge, I really don't need a very big acceleration at all in order to uh, end up with the correct amount of force. But for the case of the fly, you have the same force, the two Fs are equal to each other in magnitude, but the fly has a tiny little mass and an enormous acceleration. And in fact, that acceleration is so large that it tears apart the fly and it splats onto the bus's windshield. Okay, so uh, remember, whenever an object exerts a force on another object, that second object will exert an equal force on it. And if that goes against your intuition, remind yourself, okay, what I'm thinking about, what my intuition is telling me about is the acceleration. My intuition is not really about the forces, it's really about the acceleration. And those don't have to be equal. Okay, I'm going to clear this slide and uh, show you how we can use Newton's third law to work some problems. Okay, Newton's third law is uh, useful in working problems. Uh, and I'm going to start out with a really simple one. Uh, it's actually Newton's third law that allows you to use a bathroom scale to measure your weight. Uh, weight uh, is defined in physics to be the force of gravity on a person. Well, or whatever it is you're trying to weigh. So, uh, so that's the force of gravity by definition. The force of gravity on an object is that object's weight. Okay, now uh, that weight, we will give the symbol W, and it's equal to the person's mass times gravity. Uh, mass is measured in kilograms, gravity in meters per second squared, so that means that weight in the metric system is measured in newtons. The kilogram is actually measured in, is actually a unit of mass, not a unit of weight. So somebody like me who weighs approximately 70 kilograms, um, excuse me, has a mass of approximately 70 kilograms, would have a weight of 70 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, if you round off 9.8 to 10, that's approximately 700 newtons. So my weight in the metric system is 700 newtons. Uh, usually Europeans or people who use the metric system, if you ask them how much do you weigh, 
they will give you their mass in kilograms rather than their weight in newtons. Uh, I'm not quite sure why that is. Uh, maybe it's because they don't want to weigh 700. That's my guess anyway. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's, I find it kind of strange that if you ask a European how much do you weigh, that they don't tell you their weight, they tell you their mass. Uh, incidentally, the English unit of weight is the pound. You're familiar with that. Uh, what you're probably not familiar with is the English unit of mass, uh, because we almost never use it. It's the slug. Okay, so pounds sort of go with newtons. Those are uh, different units to express the same thing, weight. And then slugs and kilograms are two different units for the same thing, mass. All right, that was a little aside just to define weight and talk about the difference between mass and weight. Uh, now that I've defined weight, I can tell you how does Newton's third law allow us to measure our weight using a bathroom scale? Well, uh, so here's our bathroom scale. And here's some person standing on it. Okay, now uh, gravity is pulling that person down. Uh, so uh, gravity is pulling the person down. You've got gravity pulling down on this person, but the scale is pushing up. And because those two forces are equal to each other, uh, uh, that means that the person is not accelerating. Or you could think of it the other way, I suppose. You could say that since the person is not accelerating, you could say you know that those two forces have to be equal to each other. Now, uh, Newton's third law says that if the scale is pushing up on the person, then the person is pushing down on the scale with the same amount of force. And if the person is pushing down on the scale with a force that is equal to that person's weight, then the scale uh, can measure it and read the person's weight. So uh, let's, uh, let's do another problem. What if we were to put this person, this uh, hypothetical person who is standing on the bathroom scale, what if instead of being on the floor, what if they were in an elevator? And what if that elevator was going up at a constant speed of two meters per second? Okay, and furthermore, let's say that the uh, normal weight of this person is 700 newtons. So that's basically an average sized person. And uh, I have a question for you. So if the elevator is going up at a constant speed of two meters per second, and the weight of the person is uh, 700 newtons when the elevator is not moving, what does the scale read? when the elevator is moving up at a constant speed of two meters per second. So you uh, might think that the scale still reads 700 newtons. You might think it reads less than 700 newtons. Or you might think that it reads more than 700 newtons. Think about this. Uh, come up with your own answer. Pause uh, you know, while you think about it. When you're ready to find out the answer and the explanation, unpause the lesson. Okay, uh, if you're, are you ready? Well, uh, the answer is the scale still reads 700 newtons. And we can prove that using Newton's second law. 
the sum of the forces uh, on an object are equal to the mass of that object times the acceleration of that object. Let's draw a free body diagram of my person. I'll just use a circle to represent the person. Okay, well, we've got uh, the force of gravity down, and we have the uh, normal force of the scale on the person up. Those are the only two forces acting on the person. So what we do is we uh, put those two forces here on the left side of our Newton's second law equation. We have the normal force in the positive direction and the force of gravity in the negative direction. And that equals the mass of the person times the acceleration of the person. And what's the acceleration of the person? Here's the key to the whole problem. The acceleration of the person is zero because I very explicitly said that the elevator was traveling at a constant speed of two meters per second. Constant speed, by definition, means that the acceleration is zero. Therefore, we come back down here to our equation. We get that the normal force of the scale on the person is equal to the force of gravity on the person. But the force of gravity on the person is just the person's normal weight, 700 newtons. So the scale reads 700 newtons. Now, if you picked more than 700 newtons because the elevator was going up, what would you have to do in order for that uh, to be correct. Well, instead of the elevator going up at a constant speed, I need the elevator to accelerate. So if the elevator was accelerating upward instead of traveling upward at a constant speed, then the answer would be C, more than 700 newtons. Okay, in fact, uh, for example, uh, if the acceleration was, uh, say, one meter per second squared. Then instead of a zero right here in our equation, you'd put in the one. You'd put in the 70 kilograms for the mass, and you could solve uh, for the normal force on the scale, and you'd get a number that was bigger than 700. Okay, in fact, there's a, a homework problem, I believe, in your second homework set that's like that. Okay, well, uh, I believe that ends this lesson on Newton's third law. I will be posting some more uh, lessons, working example problems using Newton's laws uh, in a little bit.